What's going on, guys? We are live, YouTube live on the Sensible Prepper. We've got some kind of a unique thing today uh, that I'm just going to show you a lot of stuff that I just typically use all the time. Sometimes it's the things that I just kind of grab and go to, I gravitate to. This is not an end all, and this is definitely not what I'm telling you to necessarily carry or have or, or do. But it's just some things with my experience that I've just gravitate toward, and there are reasons why. And so we're going to take a look at them. Uh, first off, I want to thank Sarah Mack for uh, setting up. She's over there monitoring comments. We will be taking some questions in a little bit. Um, and also, Robbie Wheaton's not here again. He is still on vacation. And so, um, and also, I'll just go ahead and let you know next week we will not be doing a live because we will be on vacation. So <laughs> it's just that time of year, guys. But um, we really appreciate you being here, hanging out with us. And so uh, we're just going to talk about some, again, so just some different items. These are not actually all the items that I would have up here, even, but there's plenty to talk about. And so uh, there's some things I may mention that I may not show, but you may not be able to see it, but all down here on this table, we have it packed out. And so we, do, we just have a lot of things that we're going to talk about. Uh, so this has to do with your EDC items, but mainly it has to do with survival, go bag, prepping. If you're a gun guy, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Now, we're not putting in any kind of gun content on here, mainly because on live, I can't even touch a firearm. And in fact, we did that one time where we had it sitting on the table. We touched it and they shut us down. <laughs> so this is more or less just a lot of things. Now, there will be some things pertaining to guns. Uh, first off, I want to talk about bags. And, you know, one of the things to me that is super important for each person, if you're survival minded at all, but even if you're not, is to have some kind of bag with the essentials that you keep in your vehicle. Uh, this is my direct action dust. Uh, it's the Peacock camouflage color. It's a really unique color. A buddy of mine actually sent this to me, one of my Patreon members. And uh, this has been a great bag. It is my get home bag. I keep this in my car or my Hummer all the time. And I have the essential items. I have used items out of here on an occasion. I mean, four or five times I've had to actually pull things out of this bag that helped me in different situations. So I really like to have my bag together and uh, I just highly recommend that you do a good quality bag because the thing is, yes, this holds all my stuff at this point. But if I, need to get on foot. If I've got to abandon my vehicle for some crazy reason, uh, I've got my bag and it needs to be a good solid bag. And I'm about to get ahead of myself. We want to thank Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring today's live event. And they give a $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Such, S-O-O-T-C-H, no zero zero, just Such. And it's just a great, those guys are great anyway. I love Sportsman's Guide. I buy a lot of things from Sportsman's Guide and I use my discount, <laughs> but we really appreciate them. Plus the buyer's club, you get a cheaper price and you get free shipping on most items. Uh, ammunition's not included. And then heavier items, they do put a little surcharge on it. I don't think we've mentioned that in the past, but it's not that bad. I mean, it is a great resource and we really appreciate Sportsman's Guide surplus stuff, guns, outdoor, camping. I mean, you name it, they do it. So um, one thing we're going to talk about though, again, is the bags, but also I'm a big fan of Maxpedition bags. Uh, this is, uh, you know, just one of those small little handy bags. And uh, what is this? <laughs> this is the Rift Point. And um, this is just an excellent little smaller bag that I use. In fact, I was going to a um, Fieldcraft Survival Survival School and I took this bag with me because I put my survival items in here, kept it very organized. But this usually stays in my car. So I try to have something else if I'm just going to use a bag for different purposes. Uh, but there are a lot of great bags out there. This just happens to be one that I just love and I find myself using. Uh, another one that I do use quite often is the Fat Boy. Uh, it's a little bit, it's one of those gear slingers. It kind of goes across, cross body bag, but um, it's not a body bag, but it's a, crossbody bag, <laughs> but that is a great bag as well. It's smaller. I can keep a lot of content in there and I can get to it, especially on abbreviated things. So these are just some bags that I use. Now, one bag that I have used for years, and this is not really related to survival or EDC. This, well, EDC, uh, this is my computer bag. It's also a Maxpedition bag. 
I have used this for the past nine years and like we're getting ready to go on vacation. It's a great bag. It's padded. I throw my laptop in here. I can put other supplies in the front. I mean, this is just a great one of those bags that, again, I've just used the fire out of it. And the one thing about Maxpedition is that no matter how tough you are on their bags, they still look good. <laughs> that has a lot to do with some things. So uh, just another great bag. Uh, and then there are others, you know, uh, there's um, Mystery Ranch. I really like the Mystery Ranch bags, uh, especially their bigger bags for more of a bug out bag, which, you know, guys, I'm not big on bug out, but you do need to have a plan for bug out. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, there's some others. Uh, Vertex makes a really great bag. So there's a number of different ones. And that's the one thing about all of this is you have a lot of choices. And so this gives us just some ideas. Maybe if you're looking for something in particular, maybe I'll strike up something. Uh, and and we're, while we're talking about bags, because I just want to kind of go into an order of bags, tools, different things. Uh, this is one of the Roaring Fire armadillos, and it's just a tool roll. Guys, you know, I've been a big fan of tool rolls. What I really love, though, about this one in particular, I keep a lot of knives in here. I just keep a lot of different pocket knives that I have. And I can just roll this thing out. Make sure that's in there. And it's just got everything right there in front of me. Uh, one thing I like about this over, you know, another way that I keep things is that I know where everything is. And when I open it up, everything is organized. Everything has its own compartment. These make great survival kits. They make just great tool rolls to put your regular tools in. And so, um, like I say, I love tool rolls and just because they're so organized, you know, if you get into your backpack, you know, a lot of times there's a lot in there. You're digging through it. You're trying to find things. There are a lot of compartments, but, you know, sometimes you can't remember where it is. And that's one thing about a tool roll is you can just kind of lay it out. Everything's there. It doesn't replace your backpack, but it's definitely a good supplement and something you can actually put in a backpack. They do make a smaller one as well. But uh, in fact, the, the armadillo minis are pretty cool. So check out the uh, Roaring Fire Armadillos. They are just great and they're fairly reasonable and they're waterproof, made of canvas, just great bags. But speaking of tool rolls, this is my Exotac Fire Roll. <laughs> this thing is packed because I'm a fire bug, but all kind of different items in here. We did a review on this a while back. Uh, I ended up ordering a couple of more because they're just so usable. Uh, in fact, I think they changed it from this one. This was one of their initial ones. But uh, this thing, it just has all of my fire kit. I like to keep a fire kit. I like to have all my stuff together. I've done a number of videos on fire kits. But this one with the tool roll, it actually folds out. I've got everything where I can see it. I've got my Vaseline and cotton balls. Well, these are actually tender taps. But I do have some Vaseline and cotton balls in here. That's some of my favorites. But uh, just great. And one thing about Exotac, because I've been a big fan of Exotac for a long time. I mean, this is their Fire Rod XL. This thing is a beast. Is that everything you can order, get a 20% discount on Exotac products using Such00. There is a link down below in the description. It is an affiliate link, but I've been buying stuff from Exotac for a long time. And a buddy of mine that works there told me, he said, you need to be, you know, we can give your viewers a discount. So 20% off is a great discount for anything, really. So uh, check out Exotac. They are my favorite fire starters. The fire rod is just a vital tool for me. And it's a little bit more quality than a lot of your fire tools. Uh, they're a little more expensive, but they're all made in the USA. In fact, they're down in Georgia. And uh, so I'm a big fan of a lot of different items that Exotac makes. And so you'll see them a lot of times in a lot of different things that I do. So that, and then we have a, this is one of the embers, and I believe this is also from uh, Roaring Fire. This is a great little pack. It's really solid. Uh, just uh, the construction on these packs are really great. This is another fire kit. I'm, I'm, again, guys, I am huge on fire kits. And then here's another fire kit, <laughs> but this is one of my Maxpeditions. Uh, this is one I've had for years and years, and they just hold up. The zipper holds up. This thing is packed out, as you can see it. But uh, I like to have fire and I like to have it in multiple places. So sometimes I like different things. This can be a little bit large because I really pack this out. It goes in my go bag. This goes in some other bags or it goes in my car just where I can get to it. 
And if you, it's funny because I've said this before. If you want to be the hero at a bonfire or a barbecue or whatever, have a little fire kit and know how to use it because it always seems that people need fire and they don't have what they need. We don't have as many smokers as we used to have. So people don't carry lighters as much. So uh, these are just excellent. Plus, if I have a cigar, I've got a way to light it. And then two, just some of the other Maxpedition bags. I just bought a bunch of these to make little small fire kits for everybody. Uh, they're just great little things. So, you know, to have, and it keeps you organized. And guys, you know, that's one of the big things about being a prepper is staying organized, staying on top of your gear, knowing where it is. And, uh, you know, that's been a real tough challenge for me over the years, especially doing a review on this bag. And then I've got to fill out this bag and then I've got to change it to this tool roll and I've got to do different things. So for me, it's an added challenge, but I definitely think that uh, it's something that you need to consider. Now, this is actually a little Maxpedition pouch, but this has my lock pick set in it. <laughs> Thanks to NC Heel. But uh, this has a whole little kit inside here where I can pick locks. And that's a, a great skill to have. So that's kind of pretty much the bags, but I do want to add something that is a supplement to the bags. And that is one of these uh, heavy mill trash bags. These are contractors bags. We keep these in all of our go bags. I keep these in any kind of survival kit because th there are so many uses for these bags. You can use them for shelter. You can use them as a rain jacket. You can cut a hole in it, put it over as a, uh, you know, poncho, uh, you can fill this with things. You can, I mean, I did a video actually on the uses of these bags. There's so many. And so this to me is a big one. And in the rule of threes, you have three hours uh, in harsh conditions. And if it's raining and you get chilled, you know, you can really catch a cold easily. Uh, and so having something like this can save you and it's just really easy. Uh, but also along that line, we're just going to kind of go through and kind of hit some high points. Uh, the Wooby. The Rangers use the Wooby. This is an excellent, it's very lightweight. It's really warm. It'll keep the rain off. It'll make shelter. And I'll tell you, in fact, a little story. I have a, a friend of my son's was going camping and all he had was a small slumber bag. And so uh, he came by and I gave him one of the Woobies and I said, use this inside your sleeping bag. And he was going way up in the mountains. It was cold. It was actually during the winter time. And he said he took this and wrapped up in it and he stayed warmer than all these other guys that had really nice sleeping bags. He said they were all cold because he was able to stay warm and the Wooby was the reason. And it's been used by the Rangers for years and years. And you can look up Wooby, W-O-O-B-I-E. I mean, they're surplus. In fact, I got this at Sportsman's Guide. And so it's just one of those things. Now, let me just say this because I want to make sure everybody knows um, the things I'm showing are not necessarily, this is not a commercial. I mean, I know I've talked about a couple of things because you can get some discounts, but these are things that I honestly use on a regular basis. I've just found that these work for me. Okay. So let's go to optics. Why don't we go to optics? The, one of the best optics and really the best reticle, the best reticle out there is the ACSS reticle by primary arms. Uh, and, you know, I've got a lot of different scopes, a lot of different high dollar scopes. Now, sometimes with glass, especially if you're looking at really long distances, uh, you know, you want something that's superior. And so you want something with really crisp glass because detail can be very important. Uh, Primary Arms does a great job on their glass when they have their uh, upper tier series glass is made in Japan. And so it's really good. This is a one by eight ACSS reticle. Uh, I believe this is the Raptor. This is a great scope, but not only for the ACSS in a scope like that, but even like this Cyclops, which is a 1X prism scope. But now my big favorite right now, and this is the SLX MP, and it's molded really cool. I mean, it's just got a beautiful uh, design to it, and it has a diopter on the back. So for my eyesight, as I'm getting older, it's getting a little more difficult, and I'll tell you, it's small on the rifle. This is a beautiful little scope and it has the ACSS. It's an etched reticle and then it has bullet drop. And in fact, I just did a review on the Suits channel on this. So any of the ACSS scopes, they're medium priced. They're not, uh, they're not cheap scopes. They're just medium priced, but yet they give a lot of advantages. But that reticle system to me sets it apart. 
I've been talking about ACSS for a long time. And guys, that is the optic. That is the reticle system that I like. I even have a ACOG with the ACSS reticle that Dimitri from Primary Arms designed. So a lot of people see the value in ACSS, which means um, advanced combat sighting system. So those are just big ones. And if you're looking for a good scope and you don't want to break the bank, run over to primary arms, they have a lifetime warranty on. So uh, that's just a great scope. Um, okay, some lighting options. Now you guys already know that I'm going to talk about Olight, but I've been carrying Olight as an EDC for almost 10 years, if not 10 years. You can go back and look on the Suits channel, look up Olight and you'll see, I think it was 2011. It was toward the fall. Uh, and guys, I have a lot of choices. I mean, a lot of choices. I, I'm a big fan of Surefire. I like Surefire lights, they're, but they're expensive. They're made in USA, but they're expensive. And, uh, but honestly, the uh, Odin from uh, Olight actually outperforms. And we've done tons of torture tests on these. The Odin is one of my favorites. You can see I've camouflaged this one with Krylon. <laughs> and um, this is the, my EDC. It is the Warrior Mini 2. I've just done a review on it. But this is what I carry. So I'm not saying, you know, that, hey, you need a great flashlight. This is the one you need. What I'm saying is, is this is what I personally carry in my pocket. Now, one that I do like is the Phoenix LD35, I believe it is. That, I like the styling on that light. It's not quite as bright as the the, uh, war, the is the O lights, but it's something that I will carry once in a while just if I want to do something different. But 99% of the time I have an O light in my pocket and I didn't stage this. In fact, I stuck this one in there just to show you the color, but I was already carrying the black. <laughs> and so, you know, they're just tough. They're tough. And then, of course, the uh, small little PL mini. And this is actually the ball door with the light and laser. And these go great on about any firearm. So those are just really the lights that I typically use on my firearms. Now, I do like the Viridian light laser. Uh, I have one of those on one of my, my bedside pistols. And, um, you know, I'm a little different than most people because I just switch things out a lot of times. Sometimes I'm just like, you know, I think I'll do something a little different because I just I've been reviewing guns and gear for so long. And uh, I do have a lot of choices but I gravitate toward these items. So uh, we're going to go over a couple of things. And if you want to get some questions together, please do. <coughs> it doesn't have to be specific about what we're talking about, but it needs to be at least in the ballpark. Um, one thing though, as far as, since we're talking about scopes, the uh, Maglula Uplula, this is something that I use all the time. And it's funny because I'm pretty quick at loading with my thumbs. But the old, the uh, Maglula, it just, especially if you're loading a bunch of magazines, this is invaluable. And this will fit your 10 millimeter Glock mags and it'll fit all the way down to your small micro nines. It'll, and sometimes when the magazines are real short, you still have enough room to get it down there. Uh, we have just done a number of different micro nines and we were using the Lula. And this is the Up Lula. And you can get it in different colors. I like this color because I can find it. But I do have some OD green and the black and different ones, but these go on all of our range trips. They go in all of our range bags. So, and to me, honestly, this is the best out there. The Maglula Uplula. Uh, they do make all kind of different uh, adapters for, I mean, not adapters, but they have like the AR-15, they have an AK, they have all kind of different loaders that you can use and they're great. And not only do you load them like this and you push it, it pushes it down, but you can actually unload it with the same mag. I mean, the same mag uh, loader or unloader. All right, let's, um, if you've got some questions, we're going to talk about it before we go into some other other items. You don't have any questions? Do y'all don't have any questions? Because we can pass it on. <laughs> okay, we got questions. Uh, Joe Central Texas asks, does your prepper group do any off-site caching? Uh, not at this point. Well, I take that back. One thing that we do have, uh, and a number of us have set this up, I have a buddy of mine and we have a storage unit where we store basic survival supplies and we store um, dehydrated foods or like mountain house, things like that, that aren't as susceptible to the heat. Uh, and you can, you know, that can be a factor. Uh, air controlled would be even better. 
but yes, we do have that. Now that's the way we kind of do it. Uh, there are some things that we keep maybe at someone else's place. that's not necessarily in the group just to kind of keep things spread out because here's the problem. If you ever, if your place is ever compromised or if it ever catches on fire, we had a fire up the street two nights ago and the house burned completely down. Thank goodness nobody was there or living there at the time. But that's one thing that, you know, that you don't really think about disasters, things like that. But yes, we have, a, in fact, I did a video on it years ago and uh, we, we still have it. We go over there and check up on it every once in a while, making sure we have things, you know, intact there. Uh, Justin Hopkins asks, ever consider making a fire kit and putting it in a little waterproof Plano storage case? Sure. Yeah, that would work great, especially if you have matches and things like that. Uh, typically, I, I think about the elements when I'm putting things together. So most of my stuff is is already you know kind of impervious to the elements. Uh, with Vaseline and cotton balls, I wrap it up in a plastic bag and seal it. But yeah, that would be a great idea. I mean, anything you can really think of is small. You can make into a fire kit. Guys, I'm telling you, and not just a Bic lighter and a little fire steel. I mean, I like to put a lot of different items in my fire kits. Uh, I like redundancy. I like doing that. Now, I'm going to tell you, I just finished a book called Alas Babylon. It was written in 1957, and it's more based on Cold War, nuclear. Uh, it was actually an apocalyptic book about a nuclear fallout and nuclear war. And this one area was kind of protected, but it ended up making it an island. And one of the things in that book, because they didn't have all this really cool stuff at the time. I mean, you know, they, and he was talking about matches after a while, because it went on for about a, you know, for, it would still go on for years is the matches ran out, you know, the, um, their, their uh, bandages, of course, toilet paper, all that stuff after a while, didn't matter how much you stocked up, it just ran out after a while. And you need to have some things that, uh, and I don't, that doesn't really have anything to do with this fire kit. But guys, I'll tell you, when I've pulled out a big lighter and it didn't work because the wheel got corroded or the fuel ran out, it was great that I had other options. And so big, big lighters are so convenient and I buy them. I buy them all the time, but, and I stock them back. But honestly, having different ways to create fire can save your life in a bad situation. Uh, Mark Mead asks, how do you start prepping? Well, what I do, everything that I put together, whether it's this bag, whether it's our preps here at the house, is I go by the rule of threes. And you can live three hours, well, three minutes without air, three hours in harsh conditions, three days without water, three weeks without food, medical and self-defense flow in between. So what I try to do is, is cover emergency shelter cover emergency water, emergency food, and I put it in that priority. Self-defense, you need to be able to protect yourself and your family. So that's a priority. Medical is definitely a priority. You know, whether it's having a trauma kit or just your basic medical supplies. And so I tr try to build from there. And then as you start to do that, you can build. I have some videos, Prepping 101, have a lot of different videos about prepping and getting started. Uh, one of the things we found was at the beginning of last year, 2020, the, the channel, this channel gained a hundred thousand new subscribers in March because people were getting interested in prepping. So I felt like it was very important to put together some basic prepping. And that's what we're about. We're about sensible prepping, which means basic prepping. And then before long, it just starts to build up. Uh, Kevin Walker asks, is the Wooby a blanket or more like a bedroll? It's more like a, a it's more like a, a shelter, a tent shelter, actually. But uh, yeah, it's more like a bedroll and it's it's soft. It has a nylon material outside, but it is thin. It's thin and it just uh, you can wrap up in it. And um, so, you know, yeah, that's what it is. What's up, Kevin? Uh, <laughs> Would you be willing to do a prepper gear tour video of everything you've collected over the years? Sometimes, you know, what's willing and what would actually take the time to do it. I, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, but, you know, it's the one thing that I try to do, and I have done some things where I've showed our, our I've, I've did some videos with food, our food and, you know, showing some of the long term food, showing some of our pantry, showing some of our stock of regular food. One thing I do want to uh, mention, 
guys, is when you're preparing for food, you know, we went to the Mormon cannery. We got 30 year shelf life food. We got all this stuff. When 2020 hit, we didn't get into that. We got in, we wanted the foods that we ate and we ended up, we had a lot of stuff set aside, but we had a lot of canned foods. Canned foods are great. They'll last forever. And so, you know, that's one thing you want to think about is there are different levels of preparedness. There's like, oh, this is the last resort. There's no food anywhere. This is what we have. And we'll take the time to prepare and to do what we need to do with that. But with regular day to day, we want to have more convenience because we're going to be working and doing things in a disaster situation. So we stock up a lot of canned food. Uh, we do a lot of mountain house and that kind of stuff as well. But we, we really are heavy on basic foods that have long shelf lives, shelf stable food. So we really try to build that up. Then once we get through that, we go to some of the other things that we have. Uh, David Hain asked, do you carry Olight chargers with you or just backup Olights? Typically, I don't carry a charger with me. I do have chargers in my bags, which are in my vehicle. And I do have a charger that I use in my car. And, and then I have a charger in my shop. So, I mean, you know, I have chargers available, but I find that I don't really need them. Now, if you're like an AC guy, you know, you're going under houses, you're using your light constantly, you're definitely going to want to have some way to recharge it. But one of the things that helps with your bat with your light is keep it on a lower mode when you're using it. Just keep it on that low mode. This one had the, the Warrior Mini has a side switch, so I can set it at a low mode. And then if I need really high, I come in and then I boom, and then I've got tons of light. But you don't typically use your brightest light that often. I mean, you really don't need to. And so if you're using that lower setting, you're able to see you know, you can preserve your battery, but being rechargeable. And that's the one thing big, big, big about Olight is I throw that little magnetic pad on here, plug it into a USB and it's so easy to charge. I'm not having to open it up to stick something in a battery and have it apart and have it in my car rolling around. That's one of the, to me, one of the biggest things about Olight that sets it apart as far as it's charging, but then the light itself. And guys, you know, I get this all the time about people saying, oh, Olight's junk, Olight's junk. We torture test these every video, every video. And these are one and a half meter drop distance. I mean, shockproof. We're throwing them 30 feet in the air over and over and over. So, you know, if, if you really want a good quality light and they do have a five year warranty on. Uh, Dusty Data asks, how is your ammo utility boxes from MTM? Are they still worth it? Oh, they're worth it. Oh, in fact, while we're talking about that and you need to take some of that stuff off there, baby, I got to show this. This is one of my favorites from e a MTM and it's just the crate. <laughs> I love this thing. I love it. I've loved them ever since I got them. Now I have a fire. We were doing a fire clinic and I've got all my stuff in here. This, these are great. They make different sizes. I like this size particularly. This is just the one. I love it. You got handles. I can grab it. I can put it somewhere. It's not big and bulky and it protects. It seals. It's waterproof. I mean, it, it's just great. I'm a huge fan of MTM. Um, and it's funny because, you know, actually I've bought a lot of stuff from MTM and then MTM got in touch with me and said, Hey, we'll send you a few things. And I've kind of done that, but I, then I end up buying more stuff from MTM. In fact, their high low table, it, we take, we go to the range with that every range trip, the high low table. And it's just one that it folds up and collapse, but then you can bring it out and it's just perfect. Okay, let's go. We're, we're, we don't want to run out of time. We will take some more questions in a few minutes. So make sure you just kind of Sarah Mack will watch for that and she'll bring them in. Um, let's talk about tools. Some of the tools. In fact, this is a video I've got coming up right now that I've been pretty excited about. Uh, when I was at the field craft survival class a while back, those guys, all of them carry the silky pocket boy. And it's the pocket boy. They make a number of different sizes of these. They make a number of different teeth or uh, teeth per inch. And this is the course. I like the course because it's right there to it, but you can do the medium and they do a fine and an extra fine. This cuts like you would not believe. I mean, it is absolutely phenomenal. In fact, one of the guys there, um, he brought it out and he said, hey, go ahead and use this. And I went down and we were cutting wood because we were looking for wood. It shocked me at how fast this thing cut. And even with this small blade, and it's simple to use. I can just press down. I love this video coming up. In, in fact, next week it'll be up. 
But uh, in fact, I love it so much. I got one of the longer ones, which is called the Gomboy. And then I got a, a short one that I'm going to put in a fire kit. So big fan, got everyone for the, went and bought them. These are not, I don't have any connection with these guys. Went and bought all my family one, put them in their go bags. Love this. Love it. Love it. I've had a number of different saws over the years. There are some other good saws out there, but to me, the uh, Silky is just the best. And the Pocket Boy is my favorite because it fits in my pack. Another thing that I love as far as tools is a pry bar. I have a bunch of these. I keep, and I have different sizes even. In fact, I keep a smaller one in my bag because if you ever need to leverage something, you're trapped somewhere or someone's pinned or something's going on, you can use this to, to help get them out. So uh, I love pry bars. These are fairly inexpensive and they have a nail puller on it, but these are just awesome. I love, I love pry bars. So, uh, and this one, it seems like I always get these blue ones. This is the Super Bar <laughs> by Vaughn. Super Bar. Um, another thing as far as tools go, one of my favorite knives, just for a basic knife, is the SE4. I have the SE5 or the SE6. I have a number of different SEs, the Azula. I've shown some SEs on here. And I'm a big fan of SE. And a lot of it has to do with my experience with its cutting ability. It is incredibly cutting ability. And in fact, I cut my finger with the Azula one time and I've cut myself a thousand times. I mean, I'm, it's just, you handle knives enough and you are as clumsy as I am. You're going to cut yourself. And I've never really worried about it when I've cut myself. I've been like, like, I cut myself with the Azula. It actually made me afraid because they're so sharp and I still don't have a feeling in this pinky, but they are just excellent. You know, they're not the highest end and there's a lot of knives out there. When you get into knives, it gets kind of like people get very particular and that's fine. And you need to find the knife that suits you. I have more expensive knives. I have other knives, but I find that the SE is the one I gravitate to, uh, especially with the SE4. I like the size. It's not too large. Uh, the SE6 gets a little big, but it has its purposes. Another knife that I really have grown to love is the Gerber Principle. And these are made in the U.S., uh, I like the grind. It's a little more of a Scandi type grind, a little bit of a higher grind. This is great for processing fire tender. And one reason why I think I like it so much, and I don't think I laid it out here, is I'm a big fan of the Mora knives. The Scandi grind, a lot of blade length there, a lot of or blade width. You're able to really cut. You know, it's funny. Uh, those knives are very inexpensive, the Mora knives. Uh, sometimes you can get them for $9.95 or whatever, but they are really dominant in a lot of the prepping community because they're just great knives. But they're, they're, they're low utility knives. I mean, it's not something you're going to cut a tree down with for sure. And that's why I have other type implements for that. But the Mora knives are great. But this little principle, uh, I really like this knife. So, you know, it's just one of those that just trips my trigger. Guys, I have boxes of knives, too. I'm, these are just ones, and that's the whole point, is there's a lot of good knives out there. It just these are the ones that I tend to go, ah, oh, I like this. So, uh, and I think that's all I've got for tools. One thing that also I really like, because paracord is a great option. I mean, it's something that I use a lot, and I like to keep paracord. This is the spool tool. It's just a little piece that you wrap your paracord around. I think you can even get it with it wrapped already. Uh, some of them are 100 foot, 50 foot. I think this is 100 foot. There's a little blade on here. And there's a place for one of the mini uh, lighters, one of the little Bic lighters. I find that those things run out and don't function all the time. That's why this one's missing. And that's, again, why you need to have redundancy with your fire kit. And you can light the end with this. So this is a great little tool. It keeps your paracord organized. And you can wrap it up on the side. So this is one thing that to me, I have a ton of these because they're just so useful. Uh, so spool tool. Uh, now, uh, well, I missed this one on the gun thing. This is something that I've actually found just recently. And this is the, um, oh, for crying out loud, the name just went whew, Neomag. The Neomag, it's a magnetic magazine holder, extra magazine holder. This thing is phenomenal. It, it's really great retention, but it's so easy to pull out of your pocket. And uh, I think I did kind of a partial review along with the Springfield Armory 
Hellcat magazines, the new 15 round magazines. I talked about this. Uh, in fact, Neo Mag actually, after they saw that, got in touch with me and I haven't gotten back to them. But uh, this is great. They even do one for the Glock that has a two magnet because the Glock magazine is lined. But uh, this will actually work with your Glock mags as well with the Glock mag. So um, if you're looking for a mag holder, because it's really smart to carry an extra mag and it can be a kind of a pain. So I think this is one option that I've really liked over the past little while. Let's see what time we got. Okay. If we have some questions. We can go ahead and ask a few questions before I get into some of the other stuff. Uh, Nick Martino asks, can you touch on water purification, please? Do's and don'ts maybe. Okay. Let me just, let me say this about, especially if you're a serious prepper, if you really want to make sure that your water is secure, guys, that is three days, three days without water. And your municipal water supply can be tainted and has been tainted in places across the country. Um, the Big Berkey, period. The Big Berkey, the Berkey filter system. Uh, we have now the Imperial. We use it every day. We use it every day. And each of the filters will filter 3,000 gallons of water. It'll filter anything. So we pour it in. It comes down to a reservoir. It's a stainless tank. Uh, last week, we actually talked about it. In fact, if you want to go back and look at uh, water is essential, we just did that last week. But the Big Berkey is the our first line of defense. We've got it. We can take care of the whole family. We've got water. We can cook. We can make tea. We can do whatever we want to. Uh, when it goes down to portable water filters, I'm a big fan of the Katadyne systems. You know, they're Hiker Pro. Uh, Sawyer. Sawyer makes a great pack, a great water filtration with uh, their Sawyer Mini. It actually has a little container with it, a little bag that you can fill. Uh, one thing about water is you want to make sure you do have a container. Uh, this is a couple of things here. In fact, we're going to go ahead and talk about this as well. These are two of my favorite water filters, as in for a small to-go bag, an EDC bag. This is just the Frontier. It's Aquamira Frontier filter straw. It'll filter 11 gallons of water. It's not a whole lot, but it'll get you where you're going. And I keep these in my smaller bags. I keep one in my vehicle at all times. But this is the Pro. And the Pro will actually attach to a hydration bladder. But this will filter, I think it's 23 gallons of water. They're small, they're easy, and they're simple. You just take it, you put your suction tube on here and then you just drink well actually i'm about to get this messed up it has your bit here and you put it on your tube and you put this down in the water and you just bite it and you drink so these are fairly reasonable as well so i'm really a big fan of these uh, i do have the life straws i do have the berkey uh, sport bottle which has a bottle with the berkey filter system in it um, the life straws are fine and they'll get you through, but uh, they're not quite as, they don't take out as many of the contaminants to me as some of these others, but we do have them and, and they are good. So water is very vital, but if you, let's say you have a big Berkey, make sure that you know where your water source is and how you're going to get it to your house. That's another thing that a lot of people don't think about. But again, check out the, the video we did last week. Okay, so I have two questions that are kind of related. Okay. Uh, Cruiser122SD asks, what backpack do you recommend for a 5'3 woman? And then um, Nick Martino asks, do you think people should be sized so their backpack fits properly versus just buying online? Uh, I think that that is, is important. Uh, typically with your nicer backpacks, with the harness that they typically have, they're made to fit you better. It's almost like buying a tailored suit versus just going to get some suit. And I know that's kind of what you're talking about. Uh, you know, you could have someone, you know, there are different locations. Let's say REI. I know if you're down in Atlanta, go by Going Gear. They have a ton of different backpacks. Go into some of your backpack stores and check out the packs. Uh, that, is a, that is very smart to do. Uh, I know my wife carried one of the Ospreys, um, and it was, I mean, that thing fit so beautifully because you don't want a lot of hot spots on your body. Now, when it comes to the smaller, a smaller statured person, I mean, you definitely have to consider that. Uh, I think something like this would be fine for her, you know, the direct action sport or even some of these that like Max Expedition. Now, these are not cheap. They're fairly inexpensive. They're fairly expensive. But this with the way this thing is set up, it's super comfortable, padded. The back's padded. It has air vents in it. 
you know, you have your waist strap, but you also have a sternum strap. But yes, I would highly recommend going and having it check out some different bags because you're right. You get online, you just get what you get. And people have different body shapes and body sizes. Certain things irritate them more. They have stronger shoulders or they, you know, maybe their hips or actually may have something that's going on. So I definitely feel like that, you know, going somewhere would be the best. Uh, but typically if you buy a really good backpack, it should be, it's, it's really made to fit more people well. Now I will say this, go and check out different reviews. If you're looking at one backpack, you can get on YouTube and any backpack you can think of, they've got a thousand different reviews on it. So I would consider that as well. But I think probably 40 liter backpack would be about as large as you want to go with someone that's 5'3", of light stature. Uh, and two, think about it. You're going to be carrying this for a long distance if you ever really need it in a dire situation. Uh, M. Jardo asks, what do you always carry in your medical kit? Well, you know, one thing, uh, and this is actually my, uh, this is what we take to the range. And this is going to, I'm going to lead into that. But this is what we take to the range. It's a Filster mini trauma kit. Fits down in your cargo pants. Uh, this is a sleeve that has compression gauze. It has an hemostatic agent, which will stop bleeding. And I believe it has a chest seal in it. And then we have our tourniquet, our cat tourniquet. Guys, if you are buying cat tourniquets, make sure that you buy a from a reputable dealer because there are some of these that are coming out that are fakes and they will break. In fact, I think Skinny Medic did a video on this. And check out Medical Gear Outfitters. They do a lot of great stuff. Diedrich and I have been friends for years. In fact, I was talking to him this morning, but uh, they do even classes on it. Now, as far as the trauma kit itself, you know, you want to have some shears you can put down in there. Again, your chest seals, you want to have tourniquet, you want to have hemostatic agent, you want to have your compression galls. Israeli bandages are one of my favorites. I love those. And so, you know, buying a good solid trauma kit, you go to medical gear, gear outfitters, you can find what you want. They'll, they'll put it together for you because Diedrich was just, has been a paramedic for I don't know, 20 years probably by now. Uh, but the other side of that is, is don't forget about Imodium. Don't forget about, you know, your antacids and, you know, the things that you use sometimes, you know, at your home. Uh, Benadryl, sinus type medicines or whatever, and Band-Aids, just your basics. Because if you get an infection, antibiotic ointment, if you get an infection from a small cut, then you're going to end up being, you know, a life threatening situation. So you want to go ahead and head that off. I wash things like that. Uh, Tao 313 asks, what is the most obscure and overlooked item you think people should consider? This right here, <laughs> your heavy meal trash bag. There was one survivalist, real renowned survivalist a few years ago that was asked, if you only had one item, just one item, what would it be? He said a heavy meal trash bag. He just immediately said it. And, you know, it really got me to thinking about it because I've been a big fan of these for a long time. Uh, the shelter, the portability to carry things. You can carry water in this. You can trap water to drink it. Uh, just so many different things. This is something that's fairly obscure. Honestly, medical supplies a lot of times are obscure. People don't think about it. Bandana, a bazillion uses for a bandana. It's something that not a lot of people think about but uh, keeps your head cool, keeps you warm if you need it, keeps your head covered. You can make this into a hobo sack. You can filter, pre-filter water through this. Uh, you know, you can tie things. You can use it as a, for a splint. I mean, it's just got a bazillion uses. We've done a lot of those type videos to where, you know, it's regular items and have multiple uses, which allows you to improvise and have the mindset of improvisation. And, and that's one of the things you need to think about. So, you know, th there are some different things, but those to me are two that are really big. Uh, the Maverick Prepper asks, do you carry something like stiff wire for if you lock your keys in your car? <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that because you it's hard to find now uh, clothes hangers that are made of wire. They're making them out of plastic. They've got a lot of different things. In fact, I did a video a while back about that and it, it was hard to find hangers. We had them at the house, but I, I didn't want to use them all up, but it, it's more difficult. Uh, yeah, that, that is a, a good thing. The one thing about it now, though, is a lot of the cars, you can't get into it with a, with a coat hanger. Uh, so, you know, that, that's one issue. But 
I, you know what? I don't keep it. I'll just, I'll just be honest with you. I don't keep that and it would probably be smart to have it, um, you know, to keep for different things. So uh, it's one thing, it's funny because a lot of times we go to the gun range now and we have the little Otis kits, you know, with the, or a, a boar snake and all that to keep our, our guns clean. But in fact, I did this the other day, somebody came up to me and he said, Hey, we got a bullet lodged into the, the bore of our rifle. Do you have one of those cleaning rods? And sure enough, I do, because we always keep one just in case that very thing happens. So I have a little military kit that has the rods in it, gave it to him. He was able to fix it. But uh, yeah, having something like that can be very useful. Uh, Danielle Dunavant asks, I can't see me using a pry bar. Is there anything else you would recommend for a woman? Um, a hammer. A hammer works like that. But you, what you what happens is, let's say that you have a child that, uh, you know, maybe you had a something happen to your house, a, a tree fell through your house. In fact, I just saw something where a baby was in a crib and a tree fell through the house and it showered down a bunch of stuff on the baby. But the baby was unhurt. But if that if a child is stuck somewhere or let's say that you're in a car and the door's jammed and you need to help get them out, especially if the car's on fire, which we that happened to us a while back is a car had flipped over and the guy was in there passed out and he had a seat belt on and he was just hanging. We couldn't get him to wake up. And uh, we were really concerned because we could smell gas. Having something like this to me is very important. Uh, you can, it gives you leverage. So even if you are smaller, you know, it does help you to kind of push and to get that leverage going. But there are smaller pry bars, but a pry bar like this will really help you to get that extra leverage to be able to move it. So, you know, that again, or a hammer, because you want something that has enough strength that's not going to break. And that's one thing. These have been heat treated to where they can withstand a lot of pressure. Uh, a knife, you can actually pry that. And there are some knives that have been really good for that. In fact, I did a video on different tactical urban type knives. And uh, some of those actually, they have ripped cars apart with some of those. So, you know, something like that would, would probably work. Uh, ben H asks, when would you engage in a firefight or defensive shooting during a SHTF situation? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully not at all. Um, in fact, uh, if you've ever read the book the, uh, by Ferfal talking about the Argentine collapse down in around 2001, uh, which are actual events that happened. And he said, the one thing you'll notice is he goes, it's not just like one day is H SHTF. He goes, it was a gradual decline. He goes, but the one thing is, as things declined, crime went up and up. And he said it was dangerous to even stop to help someone or to do anything. He said motorcycles were a big problem. So I don't really think I'm, I'm very much self-defense oriented. And, but you know, if something were to happen, you know, there are things we have security measures around our house and there are certain things that we've done in case somebody comes to our house and, and tries to do something. But you know, uh, it's just one of those things where it's a, it's something that you have to make a judgment call based on your morals. Uh, the one thing that I, I read in the South Carolina gun law, we're in South Carolina, and I just read it one time. And one of the things that I pulled away from that is that if you do the right thing, if you do what's right, you don't lose your head, you don't get your ego going, you, you just do the right thing, that typically that's within the law. It's when you lose your uh, temper or you get your ego involved in it. One thing is, if you're driving around, there's road rage all the time. And let's say somebody pulls out in front of you and you get mad and you beat the horn. And when you go by, you shoot them a bird. You have honestly just taken away your right to use a firearm in a self-defense situation. And let me expand that because if they come up to you, because you've escalated it then, once you've reacted to it and you've been ugly, if they follow you and they pull over and you, you know, you start a, a confrontation, then, you know, Really, what are you going to do? Draw your firearm? You escalated that situation. The right thing to do is to have patience with people. Be courteous. Do the right now. If if I'm trying to get out of the situation and I'm like, I'm sorry. I had a guy follow me a while back because I was pulling over into a lane. I didn't see him. And I saw him right before he, I you know, got into the lane. I pulled back. He came up beside me and just yelled and screamed and acted like I don't know what for about three miles up the road. And you know, I just waved. Sarah Mack had that problem. Same thing. Woman just freaked out. 
And I just waved, just waved, just waved. Now, if he would have tried to pull me over and run me off the road and all that, well, I say, well, you know, I tried to defuse it. I tried to end it. So same thing with people in certain situations. You know, your communication skills to de-escalate are important. And, and then if that doesn't work and you feel like your life's threatened, because guys, you got to sleep with it. If you ever do something where you take someone's life, you got to live with that. And so it's very serious, very somber thing. If you're carrying around a firearm, have respect and know that the ego things out of the window. I've got the power to take care of the situation. I don't need to get my ego up. So the, just a few tips about letting ego, letting things, vibrato and all that stuff, just it has no place in self-defense, not in real self-defense. Uh, Synth Prepper asks, Sensible Prepper, have you ever had anybody complain that they had too much stuff and too many bags because they've been watching your channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it, it's funny because people do laugh about it. Uh, here's the thing that I try to do. It, it, sometimes it's not that I think you need all those bags. I, I don't really think that people need every bag they can think of. My big thing is to inspire people to put bags together and have their supplies on hand. That is the big thing. There are different ways to do it. Just like this tool roll. There's different ways. You can put this thing together. You can put, make this into a survival kit. You can make it into whatever, you know, medical kit. Uh, but, you know, that's just another option. And I want to show people is the best option because the better I am organized, the better that I know where my gear is and I keep it together in one place and I really know what I'm doing, the more prepared I am in a, in a, a situation. You know, because the problem is, is when things are going south, you know, it's hard to think. It's hard to think clearly. So you want to go ahead and have your stuff organized, know where it is. If you need something, you can get to it. Um, but yeah, fire kit, put it in your bag, tool roll with, you know, the right supplies in it, put it in your bag and have it, you know, but yeah, that is kind of funny, really. Uh, the Maverick Prepper asks, do you roll your own flatten roll of duct tape? I do. I do sometimes. Uh, in fact, it's funny because I have over the years, I put it around a credit card and then I was at Lowe's or Home Depot and they have a little corrugated plastic where they have the, it already wrapped and it comes in these little packages. This stuff's great. Stuff's great. In fact, I, I would have that out here if I thought about it. Uh, you keep your duct tape right there with you. So I really am a big fan of having duct tape and I probably should have brought some of that out on the table. So thanks for bringing that up. Uh, do you still like the Roaring Fire 45 liter pack? I just picked one up. Yes. Yeah. They're great packs. They have a lifetime warranty. You know, they, uh, they're free shipping. They're very reasonable. Uh, I have a couple of them. I use them and they're great packs. You know, they're, they're more budget friendly packs. Uh, they definitely are not super expensive, but they're just great little solid bags. In fact, with our prepper comp, our prepper group, uh, a lot of them ordered, those roaring fire bags um, and they love them. Uh, so uh, for a very reasonably price, the problem is when you get to something like this action dust or this max Edition bag is you can buy four or more <laughs> or maybe five or eight of the, you know, the roaring fire 45 liter bags or the 35 liter bag or 30 liter bags for the price of this one. And when you're supplying bags for your entire family, that is expensive. So it just gives you another, it gives you a great option. If you want to upgrade later to something like this or the Max Expedition, then you can. But uh, I think it's a great option. So I hope you like it. Uh, Donna Sterling asks, hey, Such, do you have any suggestions for people with joint problems that have a problem walking long distance? Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Um, you know, the thing is, um, and, and there are different reasons that you can have joint problems. And so uh, my, my father, in fact, right now, he's got a lot of problems with his hips right now and his knee and he's 80 years old. So, you know, there, there's definitely some things that he's dealing with. But, um, you know, the thing is, is, you know, see your doctor, see what they can do about it. And uh, there are some things out there. In fact, there's a medication right now that a buddy of mine has used for years. I just cannot think about it. But uh, it really helped him with his joint problem. But I think one of the big things about joint problems is that you don't want to um, to sit and not continue to move past it. It's one of the things about arthritis. You know, a lot of times people get arthritis and they just kind of sit there because it hurts and then it just makes it worse. You know, it's not that getting out there and working it out will lose your, you know, pain. One thing though I would recommend, just thought about it, 
is swimming. Swimming is a great way to take the relief and the pressure off of your joints and your legs while you're exercising. So it might be something that if you have access to a pool of some sort or be able to swim or have friends that swim, uh, get in there and swim and uh, try to work that out. But not being a doctor, you know, that's the only advice I can give you on that. Okay, we're at about five minutes till. So let me see if there's something else. I've, I've kind of brought in some of the things that I had. Oh, one thing that I do like, and I, I didn't bring this up, uh, is, you know, you need a good battery backup or some kind of power bank. There's a lot of cool ones out there. Uh, one that we just got was the, one of the Patriot Supply with the solar panel on it. Um, and it seems to be pretty good. I haven't done all the final testing with it. But I will say this is the dark energy uh, power bank. And when I first got one of these about five years ago, it kept a charge. I mean, I was using it constantly. It seemed to never run out of power ever. I mean, it just kept on power, power, power. Uh, these are great. They're actually, you can actually, uh, they purport that you can shoot these with a shotgun, you know, and they'll continue to work. Uh, they're, they have a really strong case. These are a little more expensive than a lot of your uh, power banks. But to me, this is just, again, it's one of those things where I have other ones, but this is the one that I really like. I keep one in here. My wife has one. Uh, Sarah Mack has one. We keep these things. So, uh, and then, but again, we have a number of different choices and there are some inexpensive choices, but this is the one that I have, the dark energy power bank. And um, in fact, I just, I think I bought three more just recently, just to kind of put it all together. Okay, well, I think that we've kind of gone through a lot of the stuff and our time is running out. Man, that was a quick hour. That was a real quick hour. But uh, guys, the big thing is, is find the items that work for you. And sometimes you need to buy just what you need to buy. Uh, I did a video on the budget Walmart bag. Went to Walmart and when I was going to Walmart, I quit going to Walmart. But when I would go to Walmart and I bought the cheapest items I could honestly find to fit in a bug out bag or a go bag. Then I went back and got the premium stuff. I think it was like $89, including the bag. I mean, it was like, you can check the video. There's a little hourglass. You can just put Walmart bag and you'll get the video. And that's the great way to find them on the channel. But you can get, you know, you can find what you need for a very reasonable price. Now, will it last? Is it the best? I mean, is it going to work over time? Probably not a lot of it. And so I really highly recommend to get the best that you can afford, but don't go crazy if you're on a limited budget. Uh, that, that would be a great way to do it. But secondly, if you can, up it. And then once you get your bag together, then you come across something. Let's say you have a Moore knife. And man, you know, I'd like to really upgrade this. And so you, you go in and get the Gerber principle, which is more expensive. But um, it's just a great knife. I think I like it because it has a little thicker spine is one of the reasons why I like it. But, you know, you, you upgrade things as you can, because here's the one thing about prepping. You can't get it all. You can't buy it all. So don't try. But as you just continue to prepare day in and day out, and when I say day in and day out, one video I've got coming up are the 10 things that I buy regularly when I go to a store. If I'm at a store, I may see a pack of lighters or I may see, you know, my trash bags. Or I'm, you know, I'll just pick those up, canned food. And I just pick them up and I, I put it away. Guys, one or two cans here and there before long, before the year's out, you're going to go, wow, wow, I've got some stuff here. So uh, you don't need to go crazy and max out your credit cards and do all that stuff. But guys, you do need to be preparing. And we've got some possible food shortages that are coming for a number of different reasons this fall. Uh, water is, then we have all of these uh, cyber attacks and th there'll be more of those. And there's a lot of other things, guys, that in no time in my history have I seen. So it's definitely prudent to put back food, water, make sure you got your water source going, medical gear, those little things, make sure you kind of, and you can do that incrementally. If you don't have any money, have a yard sale, get rid of some of the junk you've got and then put it into something that you can use. So I hope this helps. It's kind of a lot of fun. I just want to kind of give you guys a, just an idea of some things that me personally, I just like, you may not, you may have a whole different set of tools and set of things. And that's the beautiful thing 
about capitalism <laughs> because capitalism gives us a lot of different choices. It gives, and that's the one thing I think that a lot of times people that are more socialist or communistic minded don't get is that if it wasn't for capitalism, we would not have all of these different things because people see a need and they feel a need. That's what Mr. Big Wheel said <laughs> on Robots or Big, was it Big Well? Big, was it Big Well? Big Well, Mr. Big Well. Um, anyway, so again, we thank Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring today's episode and you get $20 off every $100 or more purchase. And guys, that's 20% using Such, S-O-O-T-C-H. It works. I do it all the time. I buy stuff on there all the time. So it's really great. And if you're in their buyer's club, you get less price and free shipping on most items. And uh, that's another way to save some money. And we really appreciate it. Thanks for Sarah Mack for monitoring everything and getting the questions out there. Thank you for hanging out with us and uh, hope that it helps you to be better prepared. Because here's the thing, guys, when I started on YouTube 12 years ago, going on 13, my mission was to help people to be better prepared because the better my neighbors prepared, the better I'm prepared. So make sure you get prepared. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.